It's October 12th, 2020, and the astrology, as ever, is very powerful. So tomorrow, Mercury will turn retrograde in Scorpio, and then a few days later, we'll have a new moon in Libra, which will form a T-square uh, with Mars in Aries, and then Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in Capricorn. And this is significant because the new moon, we can see this as a, as a trigger, you know, something that's triggering this already really potent uh, configuration in the sky. And I've talked about it elsewhere, but you know, it's the Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter combination that's really the keynote of this whole time. Um, you, know, you know, so much of basically anything that we could say about what Mercury's doing or Mars is doing or any other planet, we have to refer it back to this lineup because it's so potent, it's so strong, and it's so long lasting. So, though I've talked about it elsewhere, just a quick refresher on, on that. You know, old structures are being demolished, uh, socio political corpses are decaying, uh, emotional corpses are decaying, our, our whole um, the whole way we, we structure society and uh, relate to each other as a culture is changing. Literal and metaphorical bodies are piling up. You know, we've even seen mass graves, uh, which is not something that we're used to, at least in the modern uh, industrialized world. We, we haven't seen mass graves for you know, some time, at least. So that's the kind of flavor of Saturn and Pluto and of course Jupiter can add to it um, it can magnify things to grotesque proportions but it can also offer silver linings and um, and and you know grand resolutions and the possible gifts from from you know engaging with the more difficult aspects of Saturn and Pluto so Anyway, I, I don't want to do like a big breakdown of the news and how astrology relates to current events. You know, I follow just enough news to not be ignorant, and I basically, you know, look at it like like I would watch a horror movie, like through my fingers. So, what I do want to talk about is this idea that outer events and inner events mirror each other. You know, most people, if they think about it at all, would probably agree that, that whatever humans do to each other and whatever we do to the planet stems from our psychology. Uh, it's our hidden desires, our fears, our stories, and the images at the center of these that, that become the events of actual life. And that's true, you know, I, I really think that that's true to a very large extent. But there's even more to it. You know, psyche is not limited to humans. And this is what astrology does such a good job of, of showing us. You know, the world itself has a soul. It has its own dreams and desires. And in some ways, our, uh, our inner lives reflect the movements of the anima mundi, or world soul. So, you know, I see this, this mirroring thing of inner and outer as this never-ending dance. Now... All month I've been thinking about this idea that, that the, the world mirrors our psyches and conversely that we mirror the psyche of the world back to itself in, in some way. And, you know, this is really Libra territory. And, you know, it's n no, no coincidence probably that this has been during the sun's transit of Libra that I'm really like tuned into to thinking this way. Um, but it also, of course, pertains to this upcoming new moon. So, you know, the insight, here's the thing with, with Libra, it's this insight that, that a single perspective alone is not sufficient in life, and that at some level we must seek the truth of ourselves in the reflection of others. You know, this is one of Libra's big gifts, this insight. And, and by others, you know, I would include, of course, other individuals, and you know Libra is known as the sign most kind of pertinent to, to personal relationships. But I'd, I'd include beyond individuals, other groups, and perhaps even plants and animals and spirits and, and the world itself. Now, Libra also, you know, 
Libra's very sensitive and attuned to, uh, to discord because Libra is seeking harmony. But Libra will note points of discord and imbalance between different perspectives and, and seek to, to restore them to harmony. So rebalancing uh, the resolution of tension is the ultimate goal. But, you know, a bit of Libran wisdom, I think, is the, the understanding that, that sometimes tension actually needs to be raised to the highest possible pitch before it will resolve. And of course, we're in such a time where, you know, harmony does not abound in this moment. And the fact that this Libran uh, uh, new moon will be in a T-square, which is one of the most tense aspect patterns there is, um, with the three most kind of uh, hardcore and intense planets that there are, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, you know, th this really shows that this idea that, uh, you know, Libra sometimes has to participate in some really messy business. And, um, and I think that, that uh, it, it's about, about going in there and feeling the intensity of that tension. And which is the only way that it can be made to resolve. Now, so Libra seeks beauty, okay? That we can think of beauty as a way of resolving tension, right? It's, it's a release. Ah, we sigh. Um, so Libra seeks beauty, but obviously a lot of what is going on right now is quite ugly. Um, now, if it's true that the world is a mirror, you know, and what we see in the world is so awful and ugly, well, then much of what we're finding in ourselves at this time is also quite ugly. Now, there's plenty of beauty too, but the thing about living in a time like this where, where so much hard stuff is up, uh, both collectively and individually for a lot of people, uh, is that even through all that beauty, it's, it's like the ugliness uh, is so intense. It smarts, you know? It, it is painful to, to experience just how much pain <laughs> there actually is and that's the kind of time that we're, we're living in you know I've talked about how it's apocalyptic meaning um, you know from the Greek word for uncovering you know the lid has been taken off of so much and, and um, now so obviously we tend to run away from things that are unpleasant and but we do this at our peril because it inevitably will come back at us from some other direction so you know, this is what Saturn and Pluto hard lessons are, are all about. You know, they, they drive us face to face with whatever lurks in our shadow. And, um, and of course, like I already mentioned, Jupiter is here to, to really amp things up to kind of, at times, even cartoonishly grotesque proportions. But it's also, uh, it's also saying, hey, like, there are gifts here. If, if you're willing to kind of lock eyes with your demons, uh, you might see some really great benefits from it. So now Mars coming in and acting with together with Saturn and Pluto, this is what uh, astrologer Ren Butler calls a meat grinder type of aspect. And, and I love this because, you know, you have the, the depth and compulsion and, and the darkness of, of Pluto. You have the resistance and the control of Saturn and then the sharpness and forcefulness of Mars. And it really, you, you put these three together and it really is a meat grinder. So needless to say, you know, a meat grinder does not exactly evoke feelings of beauty and warmth and, and togetherness. Um, so, you know, trying situations, uh, intense confrontations, a lot of negative emotions bound to be experienced right now. And I did a whole other video on this. Now, when Mars is retrograde, when any, any planet that goes retrograde, it, it's, its uh, energy becomes introverted in some way, simply meaning that its normal outward directed flow turns inward, turns into the psyche in some way. So under a Mars retrograde, we are invited to sort of follow a trail of martial breadcrumbs into our psyche and to understand, you know, to come to a, a, a new understanding of how it is that we relate to all things Mars, which include um, anger and aggression and assertion and desire. Um, so 
Now, yes, the retrograde pulls us into our psyche. And then, of course, anything aspecting Pluto will also pull us deep into the psyche. And, and when you put Mars and Pluto together, this is where we really confront some of the, the deeper, darker, heavier, more repressed, uh, difficult emotions. And um, some of the uglier sides of life, you know, the, the, the ugliness of, of aggression and, and brutality and the, the uh, you know, force that is out of proportion with, uh, with whatever it's dealing with and, and that, that goes too far. You know, this is the really the Mars-Pluto thing. And Saturn, you know, Saturn together with, with Mars you know, Saturn will frustrate Mars. And so that, again, that frustration can tend to turn things inward. Um, so, you know, the, the new moon will be lighting this whole thing up. So it might be a good time to come in with the, the Libran questions of, uh, of, well, first of all, of thinking about the world as a mirror and thinking, okay, whatever it is that, that, that's out there that is problematic, how might what might this tell me about my own inner process and, and where I'm at? Um, we might also ask, how has my attitude been imbalanced? You know, if we, if we find uh, situations arising that keep testing us, um, it, it might be that, that some way we've had of looking at the world is out of balance in some way. So, you know, the mirroring, the restoration of balance, this is what Libra is asking for. Now, So the, the other piece in this, of course, Mercury returning retrograde in Scorpio, which is a Mars ruled or traditionally Mars ruled sign. Um, and the modern ruler is Pluto. So, so this Mercury retrograde connects very strongly to these planets that are already forming the, the backbone of the kind of energy of this time. Um, now, now Scorpio, with its Mars rulership is more about the inward emotional psychological dimension of Mars. Uh, m you know, Mars also uh, rules Aries and of course Mars is in Aries right now and this is the more outward directed kind of warrior energy of Mars that, that we're probably more familiar with when thinking about Mars and the kind of action and drive and assertion and all of that courage. Um, but 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 with Scorpio, ultimately, it's about the inner courage to kind of face your demons and go into the dark places, the dark places represented by Pluto. Now, when, again, you know, a retrograde planet, introverting, going into the psyche, uh, reviewing, uh, renewing, when Mercury turns retrograde, it doesn't do that just to mess with your computer and uh, screw up your mail deliveries. It's, it's about digesting information it's about reviewing your per perspectives it's about sh uh, having your perspective shaken up seeing things in new ways so mercury turning retrograde is kind of turning us down a, a in scorpio is kind of turning us down a sort of darker psychological alley so this is another thing that's saying you know all of these signs are saying go in go in go within go within um now mercury will also be opposing Uranus and you know that in from just a kind of conventional Mercury retrograde way of thinking can uh, lead to some bigger than average snafus because Uranus is all about the unexpected and, and the sudden and, and you know things from out of the blue um, but it can also be about like about sudden and shocking insights I mean most importantly it's it's like Mercury is about information, new things coming into our consciousness. Uranus, just bam, something from, from out of the blue, like a lightning bolt. So, you know, given, given the backdrop of all of this, given the signs involved, uh, you know, Mercury and Scorpio, these insights could be of a, of a deep psychological, potentially transformative nature if we allow them through. And I, and I think the highest possibility with Mercury, Mercury Uranus can be a, a revolution uh, in thought, like a quantum leap in perspective. It's a small transit. I mean, Mercury opposing Uranus, it doesn't last very long, but 
Um, so I don't want to make too much out of this. It's a fleeting thing, but the possibility is there. If you were wanting to kind of work consciously and align with the energies of the time, it's worth noting. Now, another thing I've been thinking of with all of this you know, as I go within and, and experience all this, the intensity of this time, I'm coming to realize how much of the pain and suffering of humanity is not personal. And that's really a lot of what we're talking about when we look at Saturn and Pluto and, and Mars. Um, you know, the, it, though, of course, I mean, everybody experiences personal pain and per particularly, you know, people who have been subjected to really hard traumas, uh, people who are suffering directly from, from COVID or from oppression or poverty or, or whatever, you know, that's a very real thing. But all of these are in some way an expression of the deeper psychic scars of human life reaching down the ages. And, you know, with... Pluto and Saturn and all these retrogrades and in in the uh, uh, you know in Capricorn kind of relating to our traditions and our history and our society um, this dimension of things r really comes up so you know if we think about things like the Inquisition or the Holocaust or the slave trade or or witch hunts or or like the atrocities committed by normal 19 year olds in wars like Vietnam, you know, who then go back to live normal life, uh, you know, and, and yet have done horrible things. You know, these kinds of things leave their scars in humanity itself, not just in the individuals who, who experience them. They go into the collective unconscious somewhere. And a lot of this is what is bubbling up at this time. And so, you know, I think they even reach back into the experience of our animal ancestors. So when we feel rage or fear, you know, we're probably not aware of just how deep the roots of these, these things go. So, you know, armed with these insights that the world is a mirror and that our psychic currents, both personal and collective, run very deep, you know, maybe we can better navigate these high seas. But more than that, you know, even if we can't quite navigate the intensity and insanity of these times, we might experience some undreamt of uh, healing through through the process of, of going within and, and at least finding finding something deeper and more meaningful in all of this otherwise senseless uh, craziness that, that's out there. So one more aspect I want to mention, uh, you know, in, in the chart for this new moon, it, it, it'll go exact a couple days after the new moon, um, is Venus opposing Neptune. And, you know, when the planet of love and beauty, Venus, opposes the planet of dreams, transcendence, and delusion, uh, there will be pr plenty of room for us to drift off into la-la land and, um, and evade the hard inner work that the other planets are requiring. Um, but, you know, if we can hold on tight and grit our teeth and, and look our demons straight in the eye, uh, this, os th this aspect can, can offer some really powerful and, uh, and kind of catalytic energy to our process of transformation and healing. So, you know, I, I, I think it can do that, especially through through art, through beauty, through love. Um, yeah, now if we're thinking about, if we're thinking about art, you know, um, I, I think Venus and, Venus and Neptune can, can really tap us into some very strong, evocative kind of archetypal art. And so, you know, art that, that really speaks to the, the predominant energies of this time, you know, anything with, with Mars or Pluto or Saturn in it uh, can, can, really, uh, can really illuminate something for us. So, you know, th th things like um, Picasso's Guernica or, uh, or Holst's, you know, the, the composer Gustav Holst wrote a suite called The Planets 
and it, it's a great astrological piece of music actually um, but but Mars from from that piece is just I mean it's brilliant brilliant musical uh, evocation of the archetype of Mars so you know art can be a really really strong way through this and um, you know we want we just want to be careful with with Venus Neptune not to kind of put our rose-colored glasses on a little too uh, prematurely because <laughs> um, you know it's not this is not an innocent time and we have some we have got some hard stuff to face so you know this is going to be more intense for people with uh, with planets in the late degrees of the cardinal signs which is Capricorn or Cancer and Aries or Libra um, but it's still present collectively of course and uh, yeah, so that's all I got to say on that. Kind of a long video today, but there's a lot going on. So, yeah, uh, visit me at alexsteinastrology.com. I'm giving discounted readings still. Uh, it's 111 for new clients, 88 for returning clients. So, yeah, and if you like this, please like and subscribe. Okay, I'll see you next time.